What's up guys, welcome to Wrench Capital Charts. Today we're taking a look at Tesla, ticker symbol TSLA, on a variety of time frames in anticipation of the next trading day, Monday, January 29th. Well, Tesla on Friday finishing up 62 cents, about 0.34%, but getting a little bit of an upside fade here in the after hours, an additional almost half a percent and holding that into the close of after hours trading on Friday evening. So here on the one minute chart on Friday, potentially a couple of breakout scalps, um, little quick micro scalp opportunities. As far as clean bouncer rejection setups go that have, you know, provable edge over time, not a whole lot here, a little bit sloppy on Friday. So let's move on here to the five minute chart and try to get a little bit more context. You can see here is some fading going on midday off of that 20 period EMA potentially similar into the close off the 50 period EMA. But on this chart, we really get a good view of that late day, you know, what many would call power hour consolidation and, and upside fade um, in, in, into the after hours close. So if we zoom out to the 30 minute, try to get as much context as possible from a day to day perspective here, you can see finally putting a stop to that, uh, that earnings bleeding, really the bleeding that occurred on uh, more so on guidance than anything. We can see here on the 30 minute that that 50 period moving average did act as somewhat of a resistance level uh, Friday morning, and we faded downside off of that until we consolidated late day. And actually, after hours popping above that, keep in mind that it is very low volume in after hours, so always take after hours with a grain of salt. But of course, if you're long the stock, you'd prefer to see it green in after hours than red, right? But just understand that, listen, whether it's confirming your bias or going against your you know personal particular bias, after hours, always low volume, always take it with a grain of salt. Things can change quickly off the open the following trading day. Let's look here now at the four hour chart. Uh, look here at, a, this is the 200 period, of course, the 50 period. Neither of them quite relevant uh, lately. At least we can see volume here. Of course, picking up upon earnings, but relatively average now, kind of back to normal on this more consolidation leveling out phase. Now, we discussed as we headed into Friday, back on Thursday night, this 177.50 to 180 range was really on the bull's minds. The bears, of course, were looking to snap that to the downside, really discourage the bulls and punish them. But the bulls here held on to their own. We really bounced hard off of 180, the top end of that, that known range of what has been support and resistance. From a bullish perspective, that really is a great sign here. Now let's move out to the granddaddy of all charts, the daily here, at least from a day-to-day -day perspective. They can see here the uh, two most important technical indicators in the entirety of the market on really any security. It's going to be the 50-day moving average and the 200-day moving average, again, on the daily chart, okay? You can see we have this gap down, sure. But, you know, really, this hard, hard bounce off of that 180 range. So listen here, this one's really easy to look at from both a bullish and a potential bearish perspective. If you're a bear currently on Tesla, you're positioned short the stock or you own puts, or potentially you're bearish in another way with, with option spreads or something of the sort. This one's really simple. You're looking for a downside break off 180 through 177.50, get down through there, potentially see an upside retest and a fade, right? A rejection that would punish the bulls and really confirm the bias of a lot of bears, encourage them. Now, from a bullish perspective, you're positioned long on the stock in some manner. You have your eye on, again, both 177.50 and ideally 180. I don't mind if this thing bounces six times over the next four days off of 180. Just hold 177.50 to 180 is what the bulls are thinking right now. The psychology is important here. And by the way, it's important to understand both sides because just because it doesn't confirm your bias and maybe it doesn't feel good to consider a downside break off 177.50. It's important to understand what the bears may be potentially looking for because at the end of the day, they are kind of your enemy as a bull, right? So understanding the enemy is incredibly crucial, at least I think so. You know, it sounds kind of dramatic, but that's the reality of the market here. So a pot of hold of 177.50, 180 from a bullish perspective 
you know, ideally start making bounce out of that hole off a couple of retests, really show and claim it as support. Ideally on as, as high of volume as possible, get a really big sample size agreeing on that bounce and hold of that 177.50 to 180 range. Then start bouncing, ripping up out of the hole, making our way back up to 190. Inevitably, that big, big psychological and likely to turn technical level of $200 a share. Now, for you options traders, this is crucial. And by the way, if you're just trading stock, it's also important to understand this here. Implied volatility has faded hard after earnings, peaking out at around 57.5%, back down to 47.5% from kind of the trough of this recent look of around 42%. On December 8th okay so if your contracts have experience of some IV crush maybe you're not sure it seems like air is getting sucked out of your contracts um, from one factor or another let's say you own puts maybe you're not making as much as you thought you know via the calculation you ran let's say you own calls maybe you're losing a little bit more than you expected when you're calculating the Delta value and the theta value you're like what's going on here it's gonna be that IV crush of Vega is getting sucked out of your contracts. If you sold options, potentially you're either making a little bit more than you expected or losing a little less than you expected, depending on which direction um, you're positioned. That's going to be that IV crush working in your favor, assuming you sold them recently while Vega was above, or IV more so, was above its current level. So let's finish out this, this video here looking at the chain, what the options traders from Friday were actually thinking. Real, real big sample size here on Tesla. 2.79 million total contracts traded here on Friday. That is beautiful. The bigger the sample size, the more volume, the better and more potentially, I'll use the word reliable, I suppose, the data we can pull out of the chain here. So somewhat evenly matched overall call put ratio. 1.34 million calls, 1.45 million total puts here traded on Friday. But look here, we can get better data than that, right? Let's look at the delta ranges at zero to 20. Again, that is the short dated, typically cheapy, gambly style speculation in the short term. Calls and puts gives us a lot of insight into what the options traders are thinking if we look at volume of each in the very near term. In that delta range, zero to 20, 672,000 calls, 597,000 puts, slightly weighted here to the bullish side in the short term, but not by a ton, right? 670 versus 597. Interestingly though, one more thing to mention, in the 81 to 100 delta range, those are gonna be typically those deeper in the money, potentially mid to longer dated contracts, oftentimes leap contracts, right? Leaps, long-term equity anticipation securities here. We're getting 29,700 calls here on Friday, and this is, this is out of the ordinary. 170,500 puts. Okay, so we're getting likely some deep in the money, expensive, higher quality contracts to the bearish side in the mid, in what is likely the mid to longer term. Not always, but it's highly likely that that, that is the case. But in the short term, slightly weighted here to the bullish side. Listen, if you got value out of this video, please subscribe to our brand new channel here, Wrench Capital Charts. Maybe even consider leaving a like on the video. Helps out tremendously with the YouTube algorithm, and I'll see you in the next one.